Whether it's for breakfast, brunch, lunch, or even dinner, quiche is a wonderful thing to make. Now, there are a few tricks and tips that you need to know so that you end up with a perfectly silky custard quiche without a soggy bottom to that crust. And today I'm gonna show you how to do that. Oftentimes, a quiche has a lot of elements to it. So it's not only that custardy goodness, but there are also vegetables, sometimes there's cheese, and sometimes there is also meat in the filling. And today I'm gonna show you a very simple bacon and gruyere with a little bit of onion uh, filling to a quiche. So how do you start that off? Well, you're gonna start off with an onion. And it's important to know that whenever you're adding these mix-ins, as I like to call them, into your quiche filling, you wanna make sure that you extract as much moisture out of the ingredients. Otherwise, what's gonna happen, if you put them in raw into your filling, all of that excess moisture is going to come out and create a watery filling. So I'm just gonna chop these onions up and get them right into a saute pan here that I have over a medium low heat with two tablespoons of butter. Just saute these, you don't need to get too much color. You're really just extracting the moisture. While these are sauteing, I'm gonna start making the filling. Now, a quiche custard, as I like to call it, um, is really two components. It's eggs, and then there's also dairy that goes along with it. I'm using whole eggs today. Now, there are many different ways to go about this. Some people like to use eggs and yolks, so they get a really rich quiche. Others like to use just regular eggs, um, but I'm gonna use six whole eggs for this recipe here. Now, whenever I crack eggs, I always crack directly on the countertop as opposed to the side of the bowl. When you crack on the side of the bowl, you're more likely to get shell fragments up into the egg as opposed to cracking it on a flat surface. And to this, I'm gonna add three quarters of a cup of heavy cream. Now, you wanna make sure that you're using heavy cream here because you really want that richness. You want that extra fat here in your quiche. It'll give a wonderful, silky texture to your filling. And to this, I'm gonna add um, a hefty pinch of salt. So this is about a half a teaspoon of salt. If you're using a salty cheese, you wanna make sure maybe use a little less salt and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. So just combine this until it's all mixed together. You don't want to you don't want to whip this. You don't want to create too much air because what's going to happen in the baking process, what it's going to do, all those little bubbles of air that you create, it's going to en encourage the mixture to souffle up, and then it's going to shrink or sink on you. So just until it's nice and combined. Now. Of course, there is another component to quiche other than the filling, and that is the crust. A lot of people say you want to use a really sturdy crust for quiche, but I don't really think it matters so much um, what type of crust you use. You could use a phyllo dough for a quiche. That's really wonderful. You could use a pat brise, which is a basic pie dough, which is what I'm using today. But the main thing you need to know is that you need to pre-bake your crust in advance of adding the filling. And you need to make sure that it's pretty dark and that will ensure that you have a nice flaky crust, a nice sturdy crust, um, and not one that gets saturated with this custardy filling. So make sure you blind bake your crust first. So this looks nice and good here. The onions are, whoop, they're getting a little brown, but you know what? It's a little bit of flavor, it'll be great. And now I'm just gonna turn off the heat. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper just to flavor these guys up. Let this cool before you add it to your custard mixture because otherwise if it's too hot, it's gonna start cooking the filling, which you don't want it to do. So this will cool. I have my Gruyere cheese. This is about a cup of Gruyere cheese. You wanna use a cheese that has a little less free moisture. So be careful, you know, if you wanna use goat cheese or if you wanna use, I don't know, some people actually put cream cheese or ricotta cheese into their quiche filling, just use a lesser amount because that has a lot of moisture. And again, it's gonna create a runny filling. But I also have three quarters of a pound of bacon, but have all this ready. And then once the onion's cool, I'm gonna combine the filling and I'm actually gonna go check on my crust now, which has been blind baking. Okay, so the crust I have here is nicely blind baked. You can see it's golden brown, and this just came out of the oven. Now, while it's still hot, a little trick I have, whenever I'm making a quiche, or if this is a custard tart or pie, take a little bit of egg white. This is just one egg white, and I'm frothing it slightly with a fork, and take a pastry brush and brush 
the egg white on the crust while it's still warm and then let this cool. And what this does is it creates a seal right on top of the crust and the custardy filling mixture will not seep into the crust and give you a soggy crust. It'll say nice and crisp. So by the way, my oven was at 375 degrees to blind bake the crust. You wanna make sure that you turn it down to 325 so that it cooks the filling at a nice uh, low temperature. I'm gonna add the cooled onions right to the filling, the bacon right in. Now you could use bacon, you could use pancetta. Um, if you wanted to chop up ham, that would be really great here as well. Just mix this together and I'm going to add my Gruyere cheese. Now, I think I'm gonna add half and do something a little crazy. Just mix this together. And now, I'm gonna take the rest of the cheese here, sprinkle it lightly in the bottom. Again, when this melts down in the cooking process, it'll help to create a little bit of a barrier in between the crust and the filling. And now I'm gonna pour in this delicious filling. And so now this goes back into the oven at 325 again for about 40 minutes. So this is gonna cook for a long time. You wanna make sure that the top gets nice and brown. All of that cheese that's in the filling is gonna get nice and bubbly and the filling in the center is set. It might shake slightly, but that's okay. You wanna make sure it's pretty much set. So right into the oven. The quiche, it's out of the oven. It's been cooling slightly. Now you don't wanna serve this right out of the oven because it's not gonna slice nicely, but you don't necessarily have to serve this cold. So room temperature is really best. I'm going to take it out of the tart pan now. I usually take my hand and I place it on that removable bottom and you're just gonna pick the whole thing up and you're gonna let the ring of the tart pan fall to your wrist. You can serve it right on the bottom of the pan or you could remove it by gliding your knife underneath, loosening the tart from the bottom of the pan and you should be able to slide the quiche right off. I can't wait to try this. A beautiful piece of quiche. I'm gonna give it a try here, guys. Now follow these steps, these little tricks along the way and you will have successful quiche each and every time. Enjoy.